In the second lesson on statistics, we discuss the relationship between probability and the normal error curve. Recall that the last time we discussed large populations of measurements, we pointed out that when only random errors are operating, then the data clusters in a bell-shaped fashion around the average value for the population. Almost as important as reporting the average value for the data set is to report the spread of the data. We chose to represent the peak width based on the distance from the center to the inflection point of the curve. This distance is known as the standard deviation. We note that the peak is symmetric about the population average, and the better the reproducibility, the skinnier the peak. Expressed another way, the greater the standard deviation or the uncertainty, the wider the peak. Since any population of normally distributed data exhibits certain properties, it's useful to generalize. In order to make these observations applicable to any normally distributed data set, let's change the variable along the horizontal axis from the dimensions of the measured value for a particular case to the distance between a given point on the curve and the population average. Dividing by the standard deviation gives us a variable z that is dimensionless, or gives us the distance in multiples of the standard deviation unit. Indeed, Gauss demonstrated that this curve can be generated from an exponential function of z squared. So we can make generalizations about this curve centered about the mean situated at zero. The curve is symmetric, and half the population lies to the right, and half of the population lies to the left. The area under the curve in a particular region is proportional to the fraction of the population that lies there. Of course, we can calculate that area by integrating Gauss's equation for the curve. It's common to find tables for areas that correspond to different values of z in textbooks of quantitative chemical analysis or other sciences. Let's take a moment to make sense of this table. For example, at a distance of one standard deviation unit from the population mean, the area corresponds to 0 0.3413 number refers to the region shaded here between the boundary at z equals 0 and z equals 1. If we think of the area under the entire curve as having a value of 1.00, then the area 0 0.3413 represents a fraction of the whole contained within this shaded portion. In other words, 34.13% of the measurements lie between the average and the value one standard deviation unit above that average. This also tells us the probability that a future measurement will fall within this range, namely 34.13%. Furthermore, since the curve is symmetric, then the area bounded by plus and minus one standard deviation of the average is twice 34% or 68.26%. We can extend this relationship for z and the probability that a measurement will fall within a certain distance of the population average to any other value of z in our table. Let's take a look at how this might be useful to us by working a concrete example. In the previous lesson, we talked about the usefulness of the error curve and let's apply that. So let's imagine this is a population distribution. Suppose we work for a tire company and this is the population distribution for the lifetime of tires. In other words, we take hundreds of tires and run them until they fail. And we're getting some sense of what the average lifetime for these tires is. Let's suppose that works out to be 38,500 miles. So that's the average here. In the standard deviation we can measure, since we've got lots of measurements, we can use sigma, and we find that to be 90, 900 miles. Now, for the sake of this discussion, let's assume that we're interested in knowing how many tires 
outlive uh, or live longer than last longer than let's say 40,000 miles so that's 40,000 miles that's the line that's on the miles axis okay so what is the population that lives longer than 40,000 miles so that's this population in the wing right here so we're interested in finding out what percent of the tires are represented in that wing. We can use our normal air curve, use the areas to relate to the fraction of the population. We know that our table for the areas of the normal air curve correspond to this region between the average value and whatever boundary we've set. And we know our normal air curve table works in Z, which is in uh, standard deviation units. Now, in our particular case, we know this uh, curve in terms of miles, and so this distance, D, between the average value and the value at 4,000, that's in miles. So, um, in fact, that D value of D is 40,000 miles minus 38,500 miles or numerically equal to 1,500 miles. To work with the Z table, we need to have uh, this distance in standard deviation units. Well, Z then is nothing more than uh, D in miles divided by sigma, which is the conversion between the number of miles per standard deviation unit. So that gives us the units of standard deviation. So that's what we need to do. So let's calculate Z. Z then is equal to 1,500 miles. And we divide it by 900 miles. And we get Z in as numerical value 1666 and so on. So we need to go to our Z table. So we look up a z value of 1.666 and we'll find the corresponding area. And we see that the table doesn't really have exactly the number we want, but we see it's between 1.6 and 1.7. So the area that we want must be between 0.4452 and 0.4554. Okay. Now, if we had a value of 1.65, that's halfway between uh, the entry values for Z, we would expect the area to be halfway in between. That's intuitive, right? Okay, so what we really are saying is that we take the, f the Z value and find out what fraction that represents for the interval in Z, and we add that same fraction in terms of the interval for the areas to the smaller area. In other words, the area that would correspond to the C value would be the smaller number, 0 0.4452, plus the fraction of the interval represented by the area difference, 0.4452. 5, 5, 4, minus 0 0.4452 times the fraction. And the fraction that we're interested in is the difference in the Z value we have for our particular problem and the, and the lower value of Z. And the interval itself in the table, 1.7 minus 1.6. Okay, that should give us the fraction. 
So this works out to be a numerical value of 0 0.4519. The next digit would be a 9. So the area of interest that's the yellow area. What we've just calculated is the red area. But we know the yellow and the red together add up to 0.5. So we subtract this number we just calculated and we get the area in yellow. Okay, so it's 0 0.0480 or 44.8%. So this area is 4.8% and it tells us that that fraction of the population, that percentage of the population is represented by the tires in this yellow wing. 